Hey, hey, everyone. Welcome to Unique Ways with Thomas Gerard and Audio Podcast. We've got an awesome guest on today who can be described by helping companies solve problems for users while achieving their business goals um, with a skill set that's diverse, covering the entire spectrum from research to pixel perfect design and most things in between. And he's a designer at Volvo. Uh, please join me in welcoming Adam Erklinski. Welcome, Adam. Hey, Thomas. Thanks for having me. My pleasure. You ready for 20 questions? I'm ready. Okay. Uh, hold on here. Here we go. Number one, tell me a little bit more about yourself. What do you do? Yeah, so uh, I'm a lead designer at Volvo Cars, working in a team called Car UX. So it's really about it's, it's mostly about the infotainment system of the car, but it's also everything in terms of physical and digital controls, your climate controls, your keys, your tailgate, your doors, basically everything you interact with in and around your car and the experiences around your car. Um, I have an academic background in, in digital design and human computer interaction, and I've always worked with like the intersection between physical and digital design. Um, and before I worked with cars, I worked a lot with cameras and other types of handheld devices and uh, designing for physical interaction and UI and embedded systems. Awesome. Um, just to know for our audience, Adam and I don't know each other until now, but actually um, I taught as an assistant professor at an automotive design school in India years ago. So this is a super fascinating conversation for me. Uh, nice. Yeah. Okay, so number two, what's a key piece of knowledge that makes you different? So I think it might be a bit building on, on what I just said. So the ability to, maybe not knowledge, but more like the ability to move between the physical and the digital world and design for both of those dimensions. I I think that I'm good at not getting stuck staring at screens in, in Figma, but rather think of all of the other physical aspects of, of the context that a user is in and, and the physical space their ergonomics, the way they sit, the way they stand, the way they keep their hands, um, and not only think of what's on the screen. And obviously that's extremely helpful when working in automotive that you can combine these two things. Um, but I've also learned that it's it's very helpful when also designing for be it mobile apps or or other digital experiences. Great. Okay. Number three, why this of all things, why do you do what you do? So I, I think I've always had like the urge to create things before I got into design. Uh, when I was younger, like before I even started university, I, I used to do a lot of video editing, produce music and play around with music animation. 3D modeling. I even used to like create interfaces for games that I played on my computer for some reason, just because I thought it was it was fun to create something that could potentially be experienced by someone else. So when I discovered product design, it it sort of clicked for me because I was able to combine the analytical side of things with the creative side. So I guess creation together with problem solving is, is something that I just love to do and, and that's why I do it. Great, okay, some people say um, this is a question to struggle with, but the question is, what does your future look like? <laughs> yeah, no, but it is it is difficult, uh, difficult question. I. I, I think for me, I, I have a hard time imagining that I would do anything outside of design. Uh, and I think that's probably where I'll stay. And also like UX and design in general is, is growing as a field. So I think 
my future is definitely there. I, I guess the question is for me, I think maybe in the future, I'll not be as much of a creator probably as I am today and, and maybe be more in a role where I potentially can have impact with the knowledge that I have, but on a different, different scale. Nice. So you're with Volvo, so I imagine you can be anywhere. But the question is, let's talk about location. How does the notion of place play into what you do? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, this could mean a lot of things, I suppose. Um, but um, I'm I'm born and raised in, in Sweden and obviously working for a Swedish uh, auto manufacturer. Um, but I, apart from that, like I've always been influenced to some degree by Scandinavian design like even before I, I became a designer um, I think the role that it has played or or how it plays into what I do is that I I do value the traits of Scandinavian design like that things are minimalistic that less is more essentially and I think that there's a certain level of confidence in a designed in a design that is reduced to do only the most necessary things. Um, so all, all in all, I think that's how it, it has played into what I do. And in Scandinavian design, there is a beauty in, in the subtlety of that, uh, that you see in Scandinavia and, and let alone Swedish culture. Great. So the next one is, if you had to start from the beginning, what advice would you give your former younger self? I think something that I would give is to trust my instinct a bit more mm -hmm. and, you know, just believe in, in that intuition of how something feels yeah. um, and trust that feeling and don't always play things safe. Like it's, it's fine to sometimes mess things up. It's, it's easier to go back to and, and to build on established standards, but just trust that instinct and, and dare to try more more bold things, I suppose. Yeah, I like that answer a lot. Okay, so what's a day in your life like? I, I think in general, it's probably pretty boring. Like, I mean, outside of work and everything, you know, taking kids to school, commuting to the office or working from home uh, and, all, and all of that. Um, but um, day to day work, it's it's a lot of a lot of meetings and uh, packed days. I would say uh, some days I I do dedicate to be more meeting heavy and uh, dedicate them more to communication and like working with stakeholders. It can be designers, engineers, and and product essentially. Um, and some days I try to be more hands on. It could be a mix of meetings and, and sort of design work. Um, but I would say all in all, it, it's that. And, and when I do design work, it's not so much for me just to get like hands on and, and always just creating things. But it could also be about helping other designers and working with them on, on something. Um, yeah, I think that's that's essentially what a day looks like for me. Nice and lifelong learning. So it's a popular topic. How do you keep up to date? Yeah, I I try to do a lot of design outside of of work, and I've always I've always done that. Um, I think it's both because I think it's fun, but also for my own personal development. Um, I try to create my own challenges and try new tools. You know, sometimes the work you do doesn't always offer you, offer the possibility to try designing other things or other experiences or trying other tools. So I, I try to do it a lot. And I think that's also what got me into this. Just like when I was younger, staying up late and, and trying to learn new things. Um, and I don't think it's something that the academia never they never really taught me that it's it's sort of my own interest and my own passion and you know, trying to just do design that might not lead to anything but 
I can practice my crafts on those challenges that I create for myself. Nice. And that segues nicely into number nine, which is around tools. The question is, what tools do you use? Are you both digital and analog? Yeah, so um, mostly I would say digital. Um, I I do I do sketch on with pen and paper uh, just to like quickly get ideas out. I also write notes on pen and paper just to get that down fast. Um, but I would say that that's sort of where the analog probably stops. Um, I like I I guess like most designers I use Figma. I've used a lot of Sketch before, but uh, these days it's it's Figma. Um, used to before that, I mean, there was a world in design before Figma, and there used to be a lot of Illustrator and and Photoshop. And my first in my first design job uh, when I was fresh out of university, um, their whole UI framework was actually in Fireworks. I had never used Fireworks before, so. I had to learn that for some time too. Um, but I would say for design today, it's Figma. And then uh, there's a lot of other tools that I use for prototyping. For instance, I I use ProtoPy and starting to use that a lot more now. It's an amazing prototyping tool on a level that Figma is, is not when it comes to prototyping. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of of micro interactions, I use a tool called Principle, mm -hmm. um, which is is a really nice tool to to do those things. Um, and then another tool, out of all tools, is uh, something for delivery and and design documentation. I use something called Zeppelin, or have used a lot at least, which is a fantastic way for designers to deliver design for development and show the source of truth and actually not only for designers but for everyone interested see how the product has evolved over time and you have sort of a locked design in place that you can update and it's just nicely packaged and uh, in that sense i think separate is a great tool so yeah a lot of tools great um so we're halfway number 10 how do you deal with work-life balance um, I, I don't necessarily think of these things as two completely different dimensions or, or elements. I, I try to make my life a part of my, as a part of my work and, and vice versa. And I've always enjoyed doing design. So I never really felt that I had to separate design or my work from from life and i i guess i'm i'm just blessed with that i'm able to work with something that i love and and can do that um but with that said of course it's important to like de-stress and relax and not always think of work and i also have small children and a family so um i i need to make time for that too but i think there, I was on a uh, on a design event uh, last year, and there was a speaker uh, from Shopify that talked about something that he called storm and chill, which resonated with me a lot. And I think that's one way of of dealing with work and life balance for me, at least. Which is sometimes when you're deep into projects and you're you really in the eye of the storm and you're just busy and that's all you're thinking about that can be for some or a period of time uh, and then chill is another period where things might be a bit calmer and you can take more time to to things outside of work and life and and things might not be as hectic and you get the time to sort of relax and recuperate uh, and i think that that to me is a that just resonates that would mean a lot, then I think that's a way for me to sort of get some of that balance. Nice, I like that. So 11 is, um, if you weren't doing what you do now, what would you be doing? Yeah, I, I've always 
struggled a lot with uh, thinking about doing something outside the realm of design. Um, and I mean, my immediate sort of answer, I think, and, and the easy answer here, I think would be like architecture or more towards industrial design or designing furniture or en engineering or, or something like that. But if, if not that, I think it would be something where I'm still creating something, some sort of, of media, perhaps like music or writing or, or videography or, or something similar. What would you not like to do with your career? Um, I, I don't want to lose the feeling of, or I don't want to end up somewhere where I don't create things. I, I think I enjoy a lot creating something that someone else can get a feeling from. Um, so I wouldn't want to get away from that. And I, I wouldn't want to be in a place where I feel like I can improve or, or, be passionate about my work and not have like a long-term mission. I, I really don't want to do sort of the, the same thing over and over and that I don't see any progress or that nothing is evolving, uh, neither the thing that I'm working with nor myself. So I think uh, that's something that I would want to avoid. Do you have a favorite word, quote, or sentence? Uh, yeah, it's probably, I don't know if it's a quote, it's a, it's a sentence at least, but um, it's ideas are born in the realm of understanding the bigger picture. Um, and I think it, it sort of matches with how I think a lot around my own design process of thinking early on about the bigger picture and having a vision for the experience or product that you're creating so that it can essentially help you with the near term challenges. So instead of even, even if your task or mission is to look at the here and now, I think it's wise to sort of break free from that and, and look a bit more at the bigger picture um, so that whatever ideas you find find there that will help influence whatever it is that you need to solve in the here and now. Nice. And how about a least favorite word code or sentence? <laughs> I, it, it's, it's a quote, I think. And, and I don't think, I, I mean, I get it's, it's probably used in by designers in UX and it's sprinkle some UX on it. Mm. Um, and I guess it's used more as like a as like a joke, but I think it like, and and I I don't dislike that people are saying that, but it's more what that means and the attitude of that and that the notion of that UX is something that you can just sprinkle on something, but in fact that that still exists is is something that I I do dislike. Um, but uh, I'm hoping that you know the industry will mature more, and obviously it is, um, and that UX will will grow and and have the place that it deserves in in creating great products and experiences. Great, and if you could choose one word to describe yourself, what word would you choose? Um, my my first manager that I ever had told me that one of my key strengths was that I was diplomatic and um, I didn't fully grasp it back then because I was a junior designer and I had a lot of thoughts and opinions and things that I wanted to do and ideas that I wanted to get out and, and tell everyone about. But but now I, I think I understand it more and uh, I, I think it, it is a word that describes me well. Um, and it's about being tolerant to other people and letting sometimes letting go of, of, of your own ego and your own ideas for 
the benefit of others and the benefit of others to grow. Um, so I think, yeah, diplomatic. Great. And final stretch here, number 16, what's, what keeps you up at night? Yeah, when it's not my children keeping me up, it's um, it's probably something that I'm working on. Um, and uh, when I have those storm periods, uh, and uh, when when there's just something that you can't really let go of, um, and then I just feel like. I, if I get those ideas, I, I need to write them down or sketch it out or go to my computer and sort of just get it out of the system uh, so that it's easier to fall asleep. Great. And what's a dream you're chasing? I think one, one thing that I've realized um, last couple of years is that I, I would like to help people get into design and, and help young designers get into the industry um, and sort of just avoid the minds that I stepped on. And, and I want to be able to give people these tips and tricks that I never had when I started out and was studying design and, and was feeling a bit lost. Um, so I think that's a, that's a, something I've been thinking more about and, and a dream that I have of potentially being able to do. I'm just not sure how yet. Nice. And what inspires you? Um, I think people with passion inspires me a lot, like regardless of, of what it is. Um, when, when you see people with passion, that's, often why they're so brilliant at what they do. It can be anything like a person playing the piano or a chef making food or an artist drawing a painting with, with passion. I think all of those things, whatever it is, that's inspiring. Great, and any advice you'd like to share? I think for designers and maybe Maybe this is one way for me to give advice to to people starting out with design or younger designers. Um, but I think it would be to not forgetting to work on your visual skills and your storytelling skills. Um, I mean, a lot of a lot of us are great at the things that we do within sort of the realm of UX. But I think if you're also very good at being visual with your work and how you tell a story that is so powerful. Um, so I think that's a, that's at least one advice I would give. Great, and 20, how can our listeners keep tabs on you? How do we follow you? What should we be looking at? I, I think probably LinkedIn, you can definitely message me or, or follow me there. Um, and I also have a Behance page where I, I sometimes post some uh, design work that I'm working on. Great. Well, thanks so much, Adam. You know, I think we started um, our, our automotive journey on the podcast with the guest Todd Omitani, who, um, who's at Fisker right now. Um, but it's super awesome to continue that journey and to invite more people um, like you onto the show and and kind of build that out. So super excited for where this is going and so appreciative of having you on. Thank you, Thomas. Likewise, thanks for having me.